Hank Killam is not a household name, but it's who he knew and how he died that makes him another mysterious figure in the aftermath of John F. Kennedy's assassination. Like a footprint in the sand on the Pensacola Beach, it's a story nearly washed away by time. I would say still it's kind of an unknown story. As a kid, Pensacola journalist Drew Buchanan was told of an ordinary house painter living in Dallas named Hank Killam. One of his closest friends and his co-worker was the roommate of Oswald. And also another connection was Hank Killam's wife was actually a dancer at a nightclub for Jack Ruby. And Jack Ruby obviously was the man that assassinated Lee Harvey Oswald. So it's these two very interesting but disassociated connections, I assume, um, that have gotten people to kind of think in this conspiracy theory sphere. I know that the world shares the sorrow that Mrs. Kennedy and her family bear. Shortly after the president was killed, Killam claimed he knew too much because of those connections. The anecdotes were that he'd always heard inside information, possibly about the assassination uh, plot itself. And after a few months after the assassination, leading up to March, he starts getting more and more paranoid, getting more and more suspicious of people following him. There's quotes of um, men in black suits uh, following him, and he eventually comes home to Pensacola. He moved in with his mom here on Romano Street, but the paranoia didn't stop. He still had these suspicions and these theories that people were still following him. He would hear things. Nearly four months after JFK's assassination, Killam received a phone call around four in the morning, luring him from his bed. The accounts show that he had gone to possibly a couple bars, maybe seen some friends, or maybe been followed by some folks, maybe gotten into some trouble. But it led up to the fact that he had been found outside the Thiessen building, which is a very large building in downtown Pensacola, um, with his throat severed. Uh, and he bled out on the sidewalk. Police say Killam either jumped or fell from the first floor window of the old Thiessen building. He was found dead on the sidewalk about 35 feet away. His death report says city employees saw Killam staggering away from the window as a large piece of glass fell behind him. And the interesting fact was when the police came, um, when they did all the reports, they almost immediately ruled it a suicide. Suicide by Pensacola police, but accidental death by the coroner. Conflicting reports fueling conspiracy. Did Killam know too much? Author Gerald Posner mentions Killam in his book Case Close, a New York Times bestseller and finalist for the Pulitzer Prize for History. They were finally, the family, going to have him go into an institution for some rehab on March 17th of 64. That's the day he gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning and ends up dead. I think he knows he's going to that hospital, and what happens is an accident. The I don't believe it's suicide, it's not intentional, but that plate glass window that breaks, he obviously at some point it either hits it, is hallucinating, or it happens, and that plate glass window shatters to then feed the conspiracy theory because you say, ah, he must have been killed because he knew something. Meanwhile, he had already talked to the FBI half a dozen times, at least, telling them everything he knew. They didn't find it credible. It wasn't as though he was holding a secret. He had given the information he had, but then had this accident. So forever he's enshrined in the idea that maybe he knew something else. Killam was listed as taking amphetamines and barbiturates at the time of his death. Police noting he seemed to have a psychiatric problem but didn't seem violent. Buchanan's curiosity to dig deeper into Killam's story gained some traction in Pensacola and beyond. His article on the strange guy and his puzzling death now immortalized at a new bar called The Kennedy. Whether or not all the facts are right, we still don't know, but it's there for people to read and, and to kind of have a connection to Pensacola and, and a very large national news story. Another interesting footnote to this story, since there were conflicting reports of suicide or accidental death, Killam's brother wrote a letter asking the city of Pensacola to exhume Killam's body to determine the exact cause of death. But that never happened.